And we're coming on the air right now with new details on that deadly mass shooting on Philadelphia South Street. Good afternoon. Uh, the uh, district attorney's office has um, approved warrants for two individuals with regard to the incident that took place on South Street this Saturday night. One of those individuals is currently in custody. The other individual is not. I will only give you the name of the individual who is currently in custody. The other I will not. Um, the individual who is currently in custody, his name is Quran, Q-U-R-A-N, Garner. G-A-R-N-E-R. -E He's charged with multiple offenses, including aggravated assault, two counts, and aggravated assault on law enforcement officers, two counts as well. Um, there is another individual who an arrest warrant has been issued for. Um, I will not reveal his name at this particular time. He passes by on the same side of the street, Gregory Jackson, and two other men, one of them being the, un the unnamed person who the arrest warrant is for. As he's passing by, words are exchanged. As words are exchanged, then Gregory Jackson takes a, a swing at Micah Towns, striking him in the face. It's at that point that the other male, who we have an arrest warrant for, uh, begins in, 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 in the melee at that point. Uh, Micah, Jackson, Micah Towns is then thrown against a window while they are beating on him. At some point, you see Gregory Jackson, who did have a permit to carry, pull out a gun and he has the gun at his side. Uh, Micah Towns is in the middle of South Street. At that point, um, Gregory Jackson begins to fire at Micah Towns, who then, Micah Towns, who also has a permit to carry, pulls out his gun and shoots back at Gregory Jackson, ultimately killing him. It's at that ultimately killing whom? Gregory Jackson. It's at that point that the unnamed person, who there's an arrest warrant for, picks up the gun that Gregory Jackson had and gives it to another male in a blue hoodie who then leaves the scene. That unnamed male still stays at the scene, putting pressure on the wound of Gregory Jackson and gives his name to police and where he lives and all his information. Um, it's at that point that Karan Garner then begins firing down South Street in the location where this melee took place. And then after he stops shooting, the police, when he turns his gun toward them, fire at him. And then you see Karan Garner run down American Street saying out loud, he shot my hand off, he shot my hand off. Karan Garner then makes his way to Fourth and Bainbridge where there are police positioned there. There had been an earlier shooting at Fourth and Bainbridge approximately an hour before that. Police were at that location for that shooting. Karan Garner approaches the police and tells them, uh, I got shot during this incident. Uh, they put him in a patrol car and take him to Thomas Jefferson University Hospital, where he is at this time. Micah Towns is in serious condition at this time. He is at Penn Presbyterian Hospital, um, and that's why the charges with regard to he as, him as a victim are attempted murder. Just think about it. Ten years ago, we covered a story like this. The whole city would shut down. It would be stopping in its tracks. Today, you see what happened here. This is where one man lost his life in front of a Rita's water rice. You look up there, there's a bullet hole in the glass here. There are evidence markers all over the place. It was a Saturday night on South Street. Everybody was out just to have some fun. <laughs> viewer gave us doorbell video of people fleeing from the area around 2nd and South. One man limps by saying he was shot in the leg. We heard the gunfire and everybody like we just went inside and locked the doors. Sam owns his and hers restaurant and saw the crowd run by when the shooting started. He and other business owners tell me there were a lot more young teenagers on South Street Saturday. Some businesses even closed up early because things were getting rowdy. That They were running up and down South Street all night long. And I had a gut feeling saying this doesn't look good because they're drinking Hennessy on South Street out of a bottle and there's cops all around and nobody's doing anything about it. This is so sad to see in my neighborhood, to see the violence. All we have to do is love. Like, love is the most powerful substance. He was doing everything right. A teacher, a mentor. I miss you, Mr. Menor. When something went terribly wrong. He's out there, and you know I seen they was fighting up there. So once I saw you know somebody put out a gun, I'm like, yo, we got we got to be out. So we start walking, and then five seconds later, all I hear is shots go off. Tafik Williams says he was with his best friend Christopher Minner Saturday when bullets started flying on South Street. At the one, it was another one. After that one, it was you know they just kept going off. So 
It had to be more than 30 shots. It had to be. The two ran in opposite directions, and Minners was fatally shot in the back. The 22 year old was one of two victims, along with a gunman, killed in the mass shooting that left at least 12 others injured. And my little brother, he's such a good kid. He wasn't supposed to get shot at all. I'm not saying anyone is, but I just knew that he was going to make it out. You know, I, I thought, you know, I, I, I would have bet my last that he would have made it out. And then we got the news that my brother. Chris was a former student and residential advisor who worked with sixth and second grade boys at Girard College. Tuesday, a vigil and a balloon release showed the impact he had on not just relatives, but countless children he worked with. One word, awesome, because Chris loved everyone. He said, what I, what, what's my thing? It's not everyone hates Chris. Everyone loves Chris. The school now using the way he lived and the way his life was taken to push for change. I want our young people not to know what this feels like. I don't want them to feel this again, but I want them to make sure when they graduate from here that they are moving into the world and helping change the world. <laughs> she said, Mom, you my Valentine. I say, oh. Tina Quinn called her daughter Alexis, mini me. The 24 year old called her mom old lady. That's what I'm going to miss. I miss them on the phone calls. Every day she'll call me. Hey, hey, old lady, what are you doing? And I laugh. To call the two close would be an understatement. Tina says Alexis loved the color purple and TikTok dances. She was a homebody who didn't feel like going out Saturday night. But she ended up on South Street with her friends when the suspects began shooting around her. Two something in the morning, I received a phone call um, saying that, Mom, we lost Alexis. I'm like, Okay, stop playing. Tina says Alexis was shot while trying to escape the crowds and violence. I just want closure for my daughter. You know, like, I just want, you know, this gun violence to end. Alexis is one of three people who was killed, in addition to 11 more who were shot. Just wish it would never happen. I just wish it didn't never happen. Mourning the loss of her daughter, Tina says she wants justice. It's like a part of me. And the, the scary part is that um, when she left, I feel like half of me left with her. It has been nearly 48 hours since shots rang out on South Street. Here's where things stand right now. Just after 7 o'clock, U.S. Marshals took a second suspect into custody. That arrest happened about three miles from the shooting scene at a home in South Philadelphia. Police have identified him as Rashawn Vereen. Earlier today, police announced charges against another suspect in custody, Karan Garner, all while investigators continue to comb South Street for new clues and new video of what happened. He wasn't identified and provided his identity to the public uh, at all, I don't believe, because we wanted to try to make an apprehension um, without him knowing. U.S. Marshals arrested Rashawn Vereen outside this home. Philadelphia police charged the 34-year-old with attempted murder, aggravated assault, and firearms charges. This is in relation to the shooting that left three people dead and 11 injured on South Street. That the community is now a little bit safer, that we're able to take uh, someone wanted for such a violent crime in Philadelphia off the streets without incident. Neighbors sit and watch PPD search the house. They describe Vereen as friendly, helpful. Julian, devastated to see him in cuffs, says Vereen is a youth boxing coach, even helped mentor his son. You know, my son had a couple situations as far as a home and everything, and they also taught him as far as wise of like how to box and how to fight, and how to just take care of himself for other situations where so that I wasn't there for. But basically, they bring him in, they treat him like their own son itself. Just after 11.30 last Saturday night, you can see two men walking east on South Street towards 2nd Street. The man in the white is Gregory Japan Jackson, according to the district attorney's office. U.S. Marshals confirm the man in denim is 34-year-old Rashawn Vereen. As the two approach this man in black, who the DA's office identified as Micah Towns, Jackson pulls out a gun. Then Vereen grabs Towns. The three struggle and fight, with Towns being thrown first against a window, then to the ground in the middle of the street. That's when Jackson fires. From the ground, Towns takes out a gun and fires back at Jackson and Vereen as the two run away. Jackson is hit and falls to the ground. He crawls away, but won't get up again. Towns shuffles back to the other side of the street and police finally run up. But you can see bullets are still flying at this point. The video seems to then show Vereen pick up something. Authorities say that it's Jackson's gun. Vereen then stays with Jackson as he bled out on the sidewalk. 
Vereen was arrested by U.S. Marshals last night and is now facing attempted murder charges. Towns is considered a victim by the DA's office. Uh, I'm in bed and I hear, rat -tat 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 -tat. and I'm thinking, is that a gun? No, can't be a gun. Just can't be a gun. It can't be. This, this is your and neighbor. I'm, this is your neighborhood. How, how you feeling? I mean, sad, mad, I'm furious. I am furious, not just for my neighborhood, for the whole country. If I hear one more time, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Excuse me, can't say <laughs> on TV. What are we going to do? We're so politically divided. All right, you want to disagree about the economy or, you know, I don't know, immigration, whatever, fine. We cannot disagree about this. We have to do something. I don't care what your political leanings are. We can't continue to let people kill people. Most people who support the Second Amendment don't even know what it's about. They don't even know what it says. It's because we didn't have a standing army that you needed a well-regulated militia. And I certainly don't feel safe knowing that a whole bunch of good law-abiding citizens are packing, you know, or have AR-15s, including my brother. I can't even see him. I'd probably wring his neck. Yeah. I, I just... Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We, we, we jumped in on this. You seem like you're pretty emotional about what happened. What can you tell us? I'm, I can't believe I'm even like this. I, I heard it last night. What amazed me, all the after the rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, was it was fairly quiet. I mean, I didn't hear, I heard a siren, it sort of, and then I realized this morning, I guess all the police were here already. It's not like they had to send cars in from all over. And, you know, I eventually went to sleep. I tossed and turned, and then I got up this morning and I opened the news, and sure enough, it was what I didn't think it could be, <laughs> you know, outside my door, I, you know. and. And I texted some family members, and I just um, started crying. I, and, you know, I'm retired and think, what's my purpose now? I think it's to fight this. There's a march on Saturday. We've got to get people out all over the country. We've got to get them to Washington. You know, think about 1963 and Martin Luther King's. It changed something. And I think if you know, a million people descend on Washington, maybe this will change something, maybe. I don't know.